What's up everybody, my name is Jake and today I wanted to take a look at the 1 12th scale criminal from Felix Toys. Obviously this is going to be Nolan's Joker from The Dark Knight and I have to say right off the bat I think that this guy is fantastic. These third party bootleg toy makers like Felix Toys, Lim Toys, they are absolutely blowing me out of the water with some of these releases in 1 12th scale. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and get into this product. Right off the bat we can see everything here is soft goods. Um, coat, we have the vest, the other vest underneath, the green vest, the tie, the shirt underneath that. Uh, this is actually Velcro, so it does come off and you can see the shirt underneath. Uh, you, I believe you can also take off both vests and have them in his, uh, his jail lockup look if you want to with his sleeves rolled up and everything. But I don't want to do that because I have a real problem with putting these coats on after you've taken them off. So uh, I'm just going to hope that that's the case. Personally, I think he looks really great with his purple jacket on, so I'll be keeping that on. Uh, pants as well are awesome, nice thin fabric. And then what I think is really cool is that they actually have socks on this guy. Uh, if you're familiar with Mezco's release of the Joker, he had socks as well, but his are actually painted onto his body and they were little Batman socks. But these are, I believe, pretty screen accurate Joker pattern socks on both of his uh, feet. So that's really, really awesome. The inside of the coat here also has a really cool, like, metallic sheen to it. And he's got this chain that hangs off of the back of his body. Really awesome, just cool detail right there. Uh, one thing I'm not a big fan about is this, like, patch of Velcro right inside of his jacket here. I'm not a huge fan uh, because when, unfortunately, like, when you have the jacket either just barely closed or slightly open, you can just see this big black patch in there and it kind of contrasts with everything. It's also pretty thick so it kind of holds the jacket a little bit open at this point right here. Um, but I mean it has its use. It is actually a really cool feature of the toy so I'm not going to give it too uh, too hard of a time there. As far as articulation with the jacket on which is how I prefer to keep this guy, he's actually pretty decent. We can get a really good T-pose right here. We got single joints on the elbows, but I don't think that the Joker necessarily needs to go into any kind of really crazy double jointed poses. Not that I wouldn't mind it, it's just with all the layers of clothing, I feel like some things are maybe going to get caught up in there. Knees are double jointed, we've only got a single layer of fabric there, so that's awesome. I know uh, one of the most iconic scenes of this Joker is him jumping over Batman uh, with his legs all tucked up underneath him, so that's pretty cool. Ankles have a huge, huge, huge range of motion. These are going everywhere. You can kind of see the sock gets a little bit bunched up in there, um, but this guy is going to have no problem putting him on any surface that you can possibly think of. His feet are not going to have any problems. Uh, I know I've kind of, kind of gone out of order here. Uh, the neck is actually a single uh, connection with the head, so there's no uh, independent neck swivel or anything like that. I honestly think that that's kind of a given with a character like this that has longer hair that it's going to cut off right at the neck. Like, otherwise, we're going to get weird gaps with that neck hair area. Um, <clears throat> pop the head off. It's pretty similar to Felix Toy's other Joker, if you guys are familiar with that one. Um, which was also a great release. Go ahead and put this head back on there. It just basically swivels in every direction. You can tilt it in every direction as well. It will want to pop out of the joint if you go too far, but you can get some uh, nice head tilt, which Heath Ledger did quite a bit in the movies. So, uh, and then up, he's not going to go up a bunch without uh, popping out of the neck joint there. More of a straight on look, unfortunately. Uh, and then down, he does get a, quite a bit of range down. Ab crunch. Uh, got to hold his, uh, his waist here. A little bit. A little, little, little bit. Uh, most of the bend here is going to be at his waist, which he can actually... Sorry, I guess I'm hogging up on the camera a little bit. He can actually get a pretty decent bend at his waist, but... As far as uh, all the layers of clothing over his chest, he's not going to go very far with that chest bend. 
Uh, but again, I think that that's uh, more than acceptable for this character as he's portrayed in this one movie. And then wrists. Wrists are on a very tiny peg. But let's see if we can get this to focus here. They, they move quite a bit if you can get them, you know, move them around. You got to work with them a little bit to get the peg in the right areas, but they can move uh, a decent amount in all directions. All right, with articulation out of the way, let's talk about some of the accessories that this guy comes with. You'll see that I had him holding a playing card right here. Uh, you'll see also see that there's like a little bit of purple flashing on it. Kind of not ideal. He comes with this playing card that has cut out playing cards on it. They're already like perforated and everything. You just have to push them out yourself. But when I did it, it pulled some of the purple backing with it. They're okay. In my opinion, they're not, they're not the most ideal, but they are a cool variety of different Joker playing cards, like in the scene where he uh, blows up the judge's car. So, um, I mean, they get the job done, but I think that they could look better as far as playing cards go. We do have a pair of ungloved hands. They're just open like this. Oh open ungloved hands if you wanted to have him in his prison or jail setting that's fine um no uh clapping hands or anything like that he does have his mask from the very beginning of the movie and it does actually fit onto his face if you want to have him do that Obviously, he's not in the clothes that he wore in the beginning of the movie, but it is a cool little uh, add-on in there. As far as his other hands, all the rest of them are gloved. We have two uh, fists. Just uh, normal, everyday fists. Let's see if we can get this to focus. Normal fists. We have two trigger hands, one of which I have on him currently, and the other is here. One... Uh, just kind of grabbing hand. I'm oh, sorry, two grabbing hands. One is here, the other is on the figure right now. It's what I had holding the card earlier. Two very relaxed open hands. Two very closed grabbing hands. And then this is one of those rare figures that actually comes with an extra foot as well. If you're a fan of that quick scene in the movie where he does get somebody with a shoe knife, this shoe has a knife embedded in it. It's honestly just a thin piece of metal that does the job, looks nice. He comes with an alternate head. <clears throat> uh, this is going to be one of my complaints because in my opinion this looks absolutely nothing like Heath Ledger's Joker. Uh, I mean, the details there, I really love the paint on it. I really love the uh, glossiness of, like, the lips and the eyes. Uh, the hair is as good as it's ever going to get in one twelve scale, in my opinion. But uh, it just doesn't... This doesn't look like Heath Ledger's Joker to me. Maybe I'm wrong. But, I mean, that's something I can honestly forgive because... Uh, look how dead on that head sculpt is. Like, that one's so incredibly good why there's no contest there's absolutely no contest and then the rest of the accessories include a pair of fanned out or a uh, a hand of fanned out joker cards you can go into his uh tight grabbing hands or his looser card grabbing hands like i had on earlier uh he comes with even though we i don't think we ever see him in the movie with this maybe he does uh he comes with the bomb from the uh, boat prisoner dilemma thing uh, and it actually has like a little piece of metal that's hanging off of there a little metal circle uh, to look like it's an actual key on there so that's pretty cool he comes with two switch blades uh, one is a butterfly knife and one is an actual I think uh, switch blade or gravity knife the shotgun that I had on him earlier Love these kind of one-handed shotguns. A snub-nosed revolver. An extended magazine pistol. 
and an SMG with the uh, stock folded in. The stock actually doesn't, it doesn't fold out or anything. You can't have them in like a full on assault mode. It just kind of sits like this. For size comparison, unfortunately I don't have a Christian Bale Batman on hand. I might have one in a box in my room, but still kind of unpacking everything. Uh, what I do have is an SH Figuarts Heath Ledger Joker. And honestly, the uh, difference is night and day here. From the color of the jacket to the, just the likeness, the height. Uh, I think everything's a little bit better on this Heath Ledger Joker, <laughs> on this Felix Toys Joker. Uh, Mafex, if you happen to be a big Mafex fan and you want him to go against your Batmans there, this is a Mafex Batman. Heath Ledger's a little bit taller, a little bit bigger, I would say, but I think that you could make it work if you wanted to. I think this is going to be the real bread and butter here, though, is uh, this is a Mezco 112 Collective Sovereign Knight. And I think that this scale right here is right on. I think that this is honestly as close as we're going to get to an appropriate scale for uh, Batman for this Joker. <clears throat> Unless you want to go like McFarlane route and absolutely just get like a seven and a half inch monster. Figma, just, uh, you know, because very small. And then another Mafex. The scale seems to be pretty good with Mafex and uh, Mezco in my opinion. And that's it. Honestly, like I said, I I think that this guy has absolutely blown it out of the park. I think that this is a fantastic figure. And I would honestly recommend it to anybody who is uh, just a fan of that Heath Ledger performance as the Joker. Completely, completely blew by an accessory. I was saving it towards the end. Uh, but uh, here it is. So um, he does have an additional accessory and it has to do with the black patch inside of his coat. He has this bundle of grenades. Uh, they're on like a little black board, or it's actually like a piece of Velcro. I believe that's how it is in the movie as well. There's a bunch of loose strings coming off of it, and they all go to this little gold ring on a loop. And then this attaches to the inside of his jacket. And so if you want to have him like he is in the uh, when he's meeting the Mafia and... Uh, offering to take care of the Batman for them. If you want to have him uh, securing his exit with a little suicide uh, vest, this is absolutely an option. This is probably how I'm going to display my Joker. The ring loops around his finger. You can have him holding his jacket open and then just looking absolutely menacing like he's about to blow everybody in the meeting room sky high with the grenades inside of his jacket. Absolutely fantastic little accessory. I do think that it's worth having that little thick black patch in there. Um, also just some other features that I didn't necessarily cover. Uh, his jacket is wired at the bottom. Only at the bottom. That's where I think that maybe like we could get some more like good boy points is like if it actually was wired all the way through, that'd be pretty nice to have it blowing in the wind or hold itself open a little bit better without actually having to have him grip the fabric here. Um, each one of these segments is actually wired, but only at the very bottom. So while I think that is a cool feature, I just wish there was a little bit more. And then additionally, I think that they've done a really good job with his lapels here. There's actually little magnets that just hold them down. So you don't have to worry about his lapels kind of going crazy like you sometimes have to worry about with uh, figures that have soft guns on them. But yeah, like I said, I think that this figure is absolutely fantastic. I think that this is a solid release. I think that the accessories are great. I think that the main head sculpt is absolutely killer, and I definitely recommend it if you can still get one. Anyway, that's it. Thank you guys. Have a good one.